Hello and welcome to a brief video on the Pro Expanded Ledger for rental properties. In this video you'll see how you can easily track an unlimited number of rental homes with this bookkeeping program. Let's take a look at the screens and enter a few transactions. The screen you're looking at now is the opening screen. It's the first screen you're going to see when you run the program. And there's three main buttons, current file, new file, and open file. To run the program for the very first time, we will choose the New File button. We can then create the type of bookkeeping file that we would like, and we have four choices. For this video, we're going to focus on rental properties, so we're going to click on the Landlords button, which will set up in a file for us with the proper chart of accounts and the ability to track security deposits. All right, here's our main working screen. And at the top, we can see we've got a new file. It's called New File 1. But before we can start making entries, we need to give it a more descriptive name. So let's go to the Save button. And let's call it whatever we would like. In this case, we'll call it Rentals. And now we can see the file name has changed. And we're all set to go there. The next thing we can do is we can tag this file as our current file. So if you want to go back to this file throughout the year, instead of looking for it on your computer hard drive, you can just tag it with that yellow star. And next time you go to the main screen, when you open the program, you can choose the current file button. It'll just take you there. Now before we do entries, let's go to the setup screen. And here we can choose the financial year that we want to uh, do books for. You can do one uh, year per file. Then we have a first month of our financial year. You choose it there. And then we can edit our accounts. So whatever credit cards and bank accounts we use, we choose them. We go to our class setup and we have three main classes which are general rental, personal, and then also a split between general rental and personal you can choose as well. And those are there by default. But now we can add all our various properties. So we have two properties set up already, property one, property two, and you can delete them or you can edit the name here. So let's just call this one 123 Smith Street. And then we're done. And we can add more properties. So let's try adding property number three. Okay, so we can add as many properties as you would like. And for each, it would set up a separate income and expense statement. So when we're done with our property setup, choose close, and we're all set. Let's continue going down. We have income categories. You can choose to edit those and add or delete them as you would like. And also expense categories, the same thing. Now on the left hand side, you're going to see these check marks. And it says items to appear on business financial statement. So if you have an item that you don't want to appear on a business financial statement, you just uncheck it. So for example, if it's um, a personal item like gifts or groceries or health and beauty in these examples, these are not business related expenses and you don't want them showing up on your business financial. But yet maybe you want to record them. And you can see here, you can easily check or uncheck them. On the right hand side, you can also set up your split percentages between personal and business. So for example, if you have an automotive expense and you're running the car 15% for business and 85% personal, well, you can change your ratios here. And when you make your entry, you can use split and the math will be done for you and apportion that expense between business and personal automatically. You can change those splits anytime throughout the year and it'll recalculate the entire year for you or at your end even. You can set up your splits differently and it'll recalculate your financials for you. Same with home office expenses. If you have a home office and let's say 15% of your house is for business use or if it's 10% you can just change those ratios as you would like here and again you can use your split class when you're done. Choose close and then we scroll down further we have pre-written descriptions. So this is in case you have repetitive entries. You don't want to keep writing out the descriptions over and over again in full. You can just pre-write them and just choose them instead of uh, writing them out. When you're done, choose Save Changes. Okay, our program is set up. Now we're ready to make some entries. To make entries, we use the Enter Record button here. And this brings up our main screen for doing the entries. The very top item is Rec. And so here we can choose if you're reconciling this with your paper statement or if you have no receipt, or if it's foreign currency, or you can just simply leave that one blank. Only the items in red are mandatory. Let's start with our date, and we'll do an entry here. So let's say January 1st, in our checking account, we have something for 123 Smith Street, and it's rental income. We can choose to a description or enter one manually, but in this case, we're just gonna leave that blank and say $1,200 and submit. 
Let's do another entry. Let's say January the 2nd, we had something in checking account again for property number two. And let's say it was our uh, security deposit. So we can scroll down and that's in the bottom. And then we can say we have a $900 security deposit. If we have a receipt to tag with this entry, we can use the receipt manager. And here we can scan the receipt, which will turn on the camera on your uh, monitor. Or you can browse your hard drive for an image or a PDF and attach it to this bookkeeping entry. In this case, we're not going to do that, so we'll go back to the main screen and we just choose Submit. And as you can see, the entries are populating behind here. And with these entries, you can delete them or edit them at any time. And if you're doing bank recs, you can just choose that and go down the list. And there's a video on how to do bank recs in the FAQ section of the website. Just by clicking on the Help button, it'll take you there and you'll see some extra stuff that we're not going to show you here. There's also a notepad here you can choose to pop up and you can add your notes and you can submit that with the file for a handy reminders and so on. And also there's a report button and you can take a look at your reports anytime you would choose and you can choose which property you want the report on or if you want for all properties or just for general rental. And you can also choose different accounts that you want this filtered by and you can also filter this report out by month or by quarter or all. So anyway, let's go back to our record entry screen and make a few more entries. Now here's another thing you can do. Let's say January the 2nd you have an entry, but it's a repeating entry. So you can simply open up that little box and each time the entry appears you can put in, uh, select the date. So let's say uh, March the 2nd, uh, April the 2nd, and so on. You can keep selecting dates here with this little calendar and when you're done just click there and now we can do our entry let's say it's for our savings account and let's say it's for general rental it's not specific to a property but it's just for your rental business and maybe it's just bank charges so let's go down and choose that and let's say it's four dollars and 25 cents each time and we press submit now you're going to see that repeating entry came up each and every time and if you like you can even make these entries instead of uh, charging them right away you can make them a receivable or a payable so you can say it's a payable save changes oh we'll go back and choose bank charges and it'll highlight it for you and same with receivables it'll be highlighted and then when you actually make that bank charge you could actually then just go in and choose the account and that would update the entry so anyway there's a, another video for that uh, to show you that uh, the receivable and payable option in our FAQ section so you can watch that as well. And so really that's all there's to it. You simply continue making your your uh, entries and you can sort these entries uh, anytime you'd like by date and you can filter them out using these various filter buttons which we've already discussed. You can create new files or save them or export them as spreadsheet files or PDFs and you can also choose to print the records the reports, and also your notes. And that's really all there is to it. Thanks for tuning in.